They're all scurrying away here, but... <laughs> okay, now then, this, this is... Uh, this, is, this, is this is catching, catching Wally, Wally Dampreefer almost. Um, this is, I think, probably one of the most beautiful old houses I have seen for a long time. Now, they, these, these guys were given a quote, uh, or an estimate, uh, which was amounting to 10 or 12,000 quid to damp proof this place. Okay, now there's a pile of rock there because I've been um, digging at it. But just notice something here. Everything on the wall is all lime. There is not a thing in here that is modern. I haven't found any gypsum plaster in this place yet. It is all lime. Um, as a bit of an aside, I've, I've been opening up uh, ingles and things today and you know, we had the old fireplace and in here we've now got a absolutely fantastic huge ingle and you can even see the uh, where the original kettle would have hung there's another bracket there so we're going to open this right up and uh, redo it as an ingle but back to the damp now this place was apparently very damp if we carry on walking through, you, you will see odd little bits of what might have been mildew. And then you come into this side, and you can see they've had all this foil backed uh, wallpaper, all the, all the usual rubbish. Um, foil backed, here we go, foil, foil backed paper, bloody hell, everything. And this room actually smells a bit damp. So Wally Dampman's already been in. This, this, bear in mind they've just had a quote for 12,000. Um, Wally Dampman's already been in and put all this rubbish in here. And this is, this is supposed to drive a house out apparently. You've got the bloody stupid holes in the wall. So, well, hey, we, uh, we took some boards up. It's all wet. So the real reason for the problem is nothing to do with rising damp or anything else. What it actually is, is purely and simply that ground levels around the bottom of the house are a bit high. Um, and that's blocked the ventilation under the floors. So if we come out here and do a bit of a wander around, have a look at the vents. That one's got, got kind of water running into it and rubbish piled up. And you got Wally Damp Man and his stupid damp proofing on top. <coughs> Another one here. Um, high ground levels, the uh, top of the floor um, is about here somewhere, so you know the ground level is actually just above the, uh, the top of the floor, um, and of course these vents uh, are just channeling water in under the house, and it gets worse, I mean you can see somebody's done a, a fantastic job of raising, you walk up here, this is all higher. Uh, and now look at our subfloor vent. If we get down here, you can see, uh, I think rain's pouring in down there. And we got Wally Dampman with his stupid um, siphon tube nonsense. So the ground drops a bit here. Uh, there's another vent, <coughs> obviously with, you know, the ground level and the tarmac and everything just absolutely stupid of course that floor is going to be wet um, come round here and I'll show you the house in a sec but that's the drainage on the front again Wally and his stupid siphon tubes and if you have a look at this we've got a drain <coughs> guess what completely blocked so all the water coming off the roof of the entire house is going into a totally blocked drain at the front and that is the wettest room in there and if you look at this I think you'll see what an absolutely amazing house this is actually it is one of these Duke of Sutherland places um, with absolutely gorgeous uh, chimneys have a look at the detail Let's see if I can zoom on those fantastic really great every detail about this place is just bang on. Um, I mean the windows, really beautiful stone windows with iron casements in them. 
Uh, but coming back to the damp problems, there really aren't any damp problems with this place. Uh, there's ground level, it's not too bad there, it could do with being a bit lower. But then it starts to go up and we've got a great big bank here that we're looking at. By the time we get to the corner here, the ground is about a foot higher than it needs to be. And all the way around here, this ground here is about a foot too high. It needs to go right down. Uh, and we get around the other side. Again, you'll see the original drain height uh, in there. There's a drain. It's about six or eight inches below the, the current surface. Um, drain down there is lower so we need to go down to that original surface at least and again you've got Wally and these stupid siphon tubes I've been um, hacking one of these things out to show people um, you wouldn't believe it I mean they are they're, they're apparently a, a ceramic material but this stupid people that put these things in um, they're actually cemented in and they reckon that they're supposed to allow water to evaporate from the wall. Well, why not just clean the wall off, get the cement out of the joints, and let the wall dry out? Why do you need these things? It's complete fraud. So, uh, any of the people that put these things in, if you ever see these silly siphon tube things, don't ever use them. Uh, they're a con. And look at the, the damage they've done to this house. They're all around the walls. They're a complete, total mess. Um, but the house, isn't it just beautiful? It's one of the old estate houses uh, in Shropshire. It's a sort of Duke of Sutherland style. Um, and there you go. Isn't it gorgeous? It's a sort of Victorian outshot. Um, but this house, it, there's hardly any cement in the pointing. Uh, everything is bone dry. It is actually the driest house I've been in with only one problem, and that's this rear floor where the uh, the ground level is too high and water is actually getting into the air vents so you go inside you look at it um, this would have been the boiler room um, there's a chimney there and the the copper boiler would have been in the corner this was the kitchen you can see the the ingle um, so sort of rough beams in the roof, if you look at these, they are just rough exposed beams. There's no attempt to make them look pretty. Uh, lime plaster everywhere. And then you go through, you've got these absolutely beautiful doors. Fantastic. Um, they're still on washable floor because this was sort of kitchen hallway. Then you come into the, the nicer room. Um, this is the sitting room and there would have been a big fire in there. We've exposed the, the original archway. So this will get restored and you'll probably have a wood burner in it. But being a formal room, of course, they've got more formal beams and they've done a, a nice job of formal beams here. Um, and if we go upstairs, you'll see what an absolutely pristine place this is. Um, everything up here, this is all lime plaster. Beautiful lime, nothing wrong with it. All of the rooms completely original. There is no modern plaster at all. There was a 90 year old lady carted out of here apparently. But look at it, it's absolutely pristine. We, we've uncovered a, a uh, where are we, there. A nice old Victorian fireplace. Had a cover on it, took the cover off, there's a fireplace. Um, but this stuff is Absolutely perfect. Beautiful lime plaster. Nothing wrong with any of it. According to the damp wall is it needed 12,000 spending on it. Another room, lime and plaster ceilings. Absolutely perfect. No sign of damp, not even any salt in the chimney. Lime everywhere. I don't think I've ever in recent years seen a building complete with all its lime plaster. It's just totally original. The only bit of rotten flooring was here where the, uh, the old lady had a, a cast iron bath and it was leaking. Um, so the bath was leaked 
and where it's leaked, you've got a bit of beetle. So you only get beetle where the moisture content of the timber is a bit high. And that's why we've got a little bit of rot to the, the floor. Um, so there you go, completely original house. I can't believe it. I haven't found any gypsum. Tiny bit of cement where they fixed up over the fireplace in the 70s. And that's it. That's the only modern materials. And this place is just so dry, it is incredible. I've been fiddling here. You can see that the, the wall looks a bit rough. But when you knock all this off, underneath is perfect line plaster. <coughs> it's that dry one sneezing. Um, that's the scullery. With all the original shelving and everything in Or did have. Um, apparently there was a bit of beetle. Um, according to the surveyor, it was active beetle and it needed removing immediately. What? So, kitchen. Scullery. Brilliant. Fantastic design of house. So, what are we going to do with this place? Well, to sort the floor out in the other room, all we need to do is drop the ground level. And you know what? That's about all we need to do. The roof is the original roof. Lime torched. In perfect condition. 150 years old. Perfect. So there you go, folks. Um, <coughs> have a look at our roof. Completely original. Never been touched. It was put on 150 years ago. And it's properly lime torched. And there's virtually nothing wrong with it. Brilliant. Just needs a little bit of um, maintenance in odd areas. But I think that's fantastic. Look at those walls. No lime. No, uh, sorry, no cement. Well, a little bit there. But it's original, so it's dry. It's fantastic. And here, one final little bit. Yeah, this is an interesting bit. Um, <coughs> you're on about cement pollution, all the rest of it. You get a little bit of sulphate acid rain coming down here. Washing over the stone, the stone contains carbonate binder in the sandstone. So you'll get sulfur dioxide reacting, weak sulfuric acid running down and dissolving the carbonate binder out of a stone. And what we've got here is actually calcium sulfate, which is gypsum, forming on the surface of the stone. And that's these, these little crusts that are forming. And that is actually a crust of gypsum forming on the, on the surface. And you can see where it's been running and that gypsum forming as a result of acid erosion of the stone and the brickwork above. So quite a textbook little bit of uh, geochemistry going on there. And you can see the, you know, this, this, this crusting of the stone. Um, <clears throat> and what happens if you put something impervious on the surface of the stone, it starts to spall. And that's exactly what's happening. You're getting a gypsum crust here, which you can peel off. And the stone underneath it is soft. You see that soft stone there? If I take the gypsum off and get rid of it, that dark coating, it'll stop the stone from disintegrating. So there you go, a bit of, bit of, bit of chemistry for you as well. Cool, so that's it. Off home now.